Great pleasure right now to uh, have uh, joining our show today. Man has written a uh, very interesting book. It's called Smart Medicine, How the Changing Role of Doctors Will Revolutionize Healthcare. Very uh, timely topic, of course. And we're joined by Dr. William uh, Hanson today by telephone from uh, just outside Philadelphia today. How are you, doctor? I'm very well. How are you? I'm doing great. I had a chance to uh, to read through the book uh, over the last uh, week or so. And uh, I, I think you, you, you touch a topic here that a lot of people are are concerned about is uh, not only the health care costs, but, uh, but, but health care, the changing technology of it, the changing delivery of it. I mean, it, it's a lot to handle, isn't it? Yeah, well, we're sort of um, in the midst of uh, some pretty revolutionary changes in the way that we practice medicine, the way we train doctors, uh, and, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what we have coming out of the far end. But we're at a point now where we have a generation of older doctors who grew up with paper records and uh, as sort of apprentices during their training, and now we have a generation of incoming, very technologically savvy young doctors, but people who are growing up with sort of an expectations of having a life of their own. And they talk about that in the book. Uh, was it your dad? I think you mentioned that was a doctor. He, he treated people like you said, you know, writing it all down on on, on files and in paper, and then now it's. Uh, I guess, obviously, it's gone to computers, but now it's going to be more, what, uh, cell phones and texting and all sorts of different kind of uh, communication technologies, right? Yeah, exactly. My father grew up um, using a fountain pen, and he kept his notes on index cards and he dictated, <laughs> and then his secretaries transcribed them on the paper, and we're dealing with doctors who type their stuff directly into the computer or use the cell phone or dictate and have it automatically transcribed. Yeah, I know technology, obviously, it, you know, the medical technology has gotten so much better in the last 10, maybe 20 years or so, but uh, I guess you, you can't substitute the old, good old-fashioned, you know, bedside manner and, and face-to-face contact, but I think one thing people tend to complain about is, is the lack of face time you have with doctors, right? There's so many minutes in a day, and doctors can only spend maybe a few minutes with you in an office visit. I, I guess that is a frustrating thing for both sides, isn't it? Well, I think it's uh, it's interesting when you say lack of face time. It's the lack of face time in terms of total time, and then even more paradoxically, oftentimes just because of the use of computers, you'll see the doctor turn away from the patient in the exam room to type onto the computer, so they're not even necessarily facing the, the uh, patient when they see them. So yeah, right. uh, face time things swing both ways, but I think. I think some of those things will be corrected. There's no question that uh, we're feeling that uh, the encounters are shorter and people are finding it more difficult to get appointments. So um, everybody's feeling like the healthcare system is kind of amped up and um, that we do definitely need to find new ways of working together uh, so that we preserve what medicine is all about, which is about humans recognizing other humans in need. Talking with Dr. William Hansen, author of uh, Smart Medicine. And, well, Dr., let's, let's focus on some of the, the more positive aspects uh, of your book rather than uh, the complaints people have. I mean, we mentioned the, you know, how technology and, and, and the medical field has changed. Uh, what are some of the good things coming down the pike or, or that are here right now that maybe people aren't aware of? Well, there's a lot of good things. I think um, some of the things that I would mention very quickly is that um, we're training our young doctors, much as airline pilots and other uh, safety-oriented industries are, in, in uh, simulated crises so that they get the experience of uh, what to look for in a crisis and they learn how to be calm and work as a team in a crisis, unlike the chaotic years that often uh, happen in the past where a young trainee would be thrust into a, a medical emergency without adequate training and sometimes without adequate uh, uh, information. So that's a good, we've gone from the cult of the individual to uh, well-functioning teams on a lot of um, areas. So there are transplant teams, there are trauma teams, there are surgical teams that all work together very well. Um, we're seeing the use of electronic medical records, which have their downsides, but will in the long term, I think, help all of us so that you know a patient doesn't need to go to a new location and start all over again with their medical history. That information will be available in real time. We're also learning something about what are best practices. So in traditional medicine, it was sort of the way I like to do it as a doctor. And there were a lot of different ways of doing the same thing, and nobody ever really compared which was the best. And we're getting to a point now where we begin to make comparisons among approaches and 
see what ones are best or most cost-effective or some combination. Mm. So there's a lot of good in the future. It's just a, it's a rapidly changing environment, one that we're going to have to think about a fair amount as we go through it. You talk about uh, the, the training uh, changes right down here in Sarasota. A doctor, that's where we're coming from. Uh, down here, there's a company that makes these... Uh, medical uh, dummies that people can, doctors and, and technicians can learn on those rather than, I guess, cadavers what they used to do. But I mean, that, that whole aspect has changed, hasn't it? The, the, the training and of, of, uh, of, you know, from hands-on training, but now you can do it with technology as opposed to the old days, right? Yeah, I think that's very important. Um, the medical simulation training for uh, cardiac life support, trauma life support, yeah. for uh, crises, uh, is critical, and, and you may have noticed that there's been a couple of reports out recently where both the Air France and the, the uh, Polish uh, president uh, disasters were really due to, uh, in, in the airline industry, man, man human errors. And um, so, uh, and, and there was a fair amount of discussion about uh, uh, aviation training and simulators, and I think that that same uh, industry has uh, begun to come forward in, in medical training, and, and uh, our trainees all now go through a uh, number of simulations, uh, both as medical students and residents and faculty members. You also talk about in the book, uh, doctors now with the capability of, of the wireless video technology and all that, they can actually, uh, maybe some remote areas of the world, uh, uh, a doctor can actually diagnose people through video, I guess, teleconferencing, for a better, lack of a better word. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, there's two examples that come to mind. I, we have a, a gentleman who trained uh, as a cardiac surgeon with us at, at uh, Penn who was deployed in the military in Iraq and was able, with guidance from the United States, to operate on a young boy who had a, a head injury, an area in which this surgeon wasn't trained, but using remote guidance was able to save that boy's life by draining some blood from around his brain. Mm. We also have a dermatologist in Philadelphia who routinely consults with field workers in Botswana in evaluating um, skin rashes and lesions, and the field worker will take a picture of a lesion and send it back by cell phone to the uh, dermatologist in the United States who can then render an opinion and some treatment recommendations. Yeah, great, great use of... Uh of that technology, uh, more than just people twittering nonsense. There's, there's some good use to it, right? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Uh, are, you, uh, are you seeing, Doctor, uh, from the, your research that medical schools uh, are embracing this type of teaching? I know some of the medical schools maybe have their own way of doing it. Uh, are they open to this, uh, kind of, you know, the new well, way of uh, doctors? Of schools, sure. Some of the schools are quicker to adopt new technologies uh, uh, than others. Um, uh, we've gone uh, pen to a total online curriculum, so residents can both attend the real lecture and then go back and see a videotape of the lecture with uh, linked content. Um, Stanford, I think, has a total uh, building uh, dedicated to uh, medical education that has all sorts of advanced technologies uh, in terms of simulation, um, uh, wireless communications and whatnot. So some of the schools are very advanced in terms of the technological capabilities. It's, a, it's an exciting time, I guess, Doctor, isn't it? I mean, I know it's, it's kind of in flux. Everything seems to be nowadays, but, but I think it's an exciting uh, look ahead, isn't it, or to the near future as opposed to, you know, 50 years down the road, right? Well, yeah, I think that um, what will come out of this, the one thing that I'm very encouraged by is the people that are coming into medicine, the young people who are entering medical school or nursing schools are very bright, very passionate about doing the right thing. And I think uh, with that kind of a substrate and those people in the profession, what, what comes out to the far end is going to be uh, for the better. So I'm very optimistic about the future of medical care. I think we do have to deal with these cost issues because what we have now is unsustainable. But mm -hmm. I think we'll have a better profession at the far end of it. Well, it's all uh, outlined in this book called Smart Medicine, How the Changing Role of Doctors Will Revolutionize Healthcare. And uh, Dr. Hansen, do you have a website that can get a hold of the book or maybe send you a, a message? you want to give that out? Well, um, I, well I would use the uh, commercial book sites um, on uh, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. Um, uh, there's also Paul Gray that no one has a site where you can get through to me personally. Okay, great. Doctor, I appreciate you taking a few minutes. I know uh, you have a busy schedule, I guess. When you're a practicing physician and you write a book, uh, not too much time in a day. 
<laughs> for you, right? <laughs> it, does, it does take up a fair amount of time, but it's, uh, it's fun to do. Appreciate you taking a few minutes to be with us in uh, Sarasota today. We look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Pleasure.